Uh, we, we had a tough week last week, uh, both in, in the country, in the world, uh, and in Monroe. And we would, we would just like to acknowledge the passing of two of our great community members, uh, Alan Short of Star Wine and Liquors, uh, Dave App from Daylight Donuts, uh, and uh, the moment of silence is also for those who live in Israel and those who live in America who have members of their family, friends who have been affected by this uh, great uh, tragedy and, and terror. And uh, it's something that uh, needs to be stopped immediately. So please, a moment of silence. Thank you. Hey, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Monday, October 16th, Town of Monroe board meeting. Appreciate the attendance here. Uh, can I get a motion to open up tonight's meeting? I'll make that motion. Bingham will second. Call the question. Bingham, aye. Cool, aye. Cardone, aye. Scancarello, aye. aye. So moved. Okay, first item on the announcements. Uh, this Thursday, October 19th, is the Monroe Woodbury High School homecoming game. It's at night, 7 o'clock. Uh, if you're interested in attending, there's a new procedure currently in place. You have to uh, get on the school's website and register for a ticket. Uh, don't know if this is going to be the procedure in the future but I was on the phone today with two of the administrators at the high school and uh, they, they, wanna, they wanna try this system. There's a new swipe system they have for students and I guess they're incorporating those that register for the game. So it's at 7 p.m. It's always a great time there. Uh, so if you wanna come out and support the team, that would be, that would be awesome. Uh, Sal, I'll leave you uh, 3.2 and 3.3. Okay, uh, community trunk or treat is this Saturday, October 21st, 6 to 8 p.m. I spoke to Jen Carrillo today. They're up to 37 trunks. They still have room for a couple of more. It's a great community event. It was held here for a few years, but we've moved it <coughs> since uh, we kind of outgrew the space, so it's going to be over at ONR Park. 6 to 8 p.m., we have three food trucks come out and support this, uh, this growing event that a uh, few years in the making, but it's uh, turned into one of the best events here in Monroe. Yeah, well, one thing that uh, Jen and the committee was adamant about because we had an issue with it last year, there's no politicking at this event. This is for the children. So uh, we need to please make sure if you see somebody who's politicking, they have to be removed. Uh, from the property. Uh, food Truck Festival? Uh, food Truck Festival is two weeks away. It seems like it came quick. Uh, the October one came quick this year. We have 21 trucks slated, three bands, all local, the Harrisons, Georgia Five, and uh, Vinyl Tap. And our beneficiary is the Orange County Law Enforcement Memorial Wall. So come on out. You know that's, a, that's one of the best events in Orange County for Food Truck Festivals. Come out and support it. Uh, Madam Clerk, you want to talk about 3.4? Yes, so we are scheduled for our annual uh, electronics tire recycling and shredding day for Saturday, November 4th from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. at the Highway Garage, which is 87 Mine Road. Um, I'm looking for a resolution uh, for the board to pass to host that there. Okay. Motion to host the electronics Tire Recycling and Shredding Day at the Highway Garage. I'll second. Any discussion? Call the question. Bingham, aye. Cool, aye. Cardone, aye. Scancarello, aye. Good aye. Okay, so moved. Uh, tomorrow, uh, I believe it's from 10 to 3. Tomorrow. You want to? Sure. Uh, tomorrow uh, here in uh, Town Hall from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. will be Fearless. They will be um, displaying their clothesline 
um, their, their T-shirts hung up on clotheslines, and it brings attention to domestic violence. So um, this, it was held at Orange County last week, got a lot of attention, people wondering what all the T-shirts were for, and, and that's the purpose of this, is to start that conversation. Um, I encourage you to come and read the T-shirts. They are very moving. Um, they leave comments and stories that you couldn't ever possibly imagine. Um, and it's definitely something that we need to bring attention to so that we can take it out of the shadows and we can eliminate it. So 10 to 3 tomorrow in uh, Town Hall. It'll be in this room, too. Okay. Uh, I'll make a motion to open the continuation of the public hearing regarding the 2024 town benefit assessment rolls. Do I have a second? A second. Call the question. Bingham, aye. Cool, aye. Cardone, aye. Scancarello, aye. Aye. Okay, so moved. No public comment. No public comment. Anything on your behalf, Madam Clerk? Um, we have not received any more um, phone calls, questions. So if the board is comfortable closing it, I'm fine with that. Board feel. Make a motion that we close the public hearing uh, for the, t the 2024 town benefit assessment rules. I'll second. Any discussion? Call the question. Aye. Cool, aye. Cardone, aye. Scancarello, aye. Good night. Okay, so moved. Uh, motion to open up the public hearing for the 2024 Town of Monroe preliminary budget. Cool, a second. Call the question. Aye. Cool, aye. Cardone, aye. Scancarello, aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, no public comment. No public comment. <clears throat> okay, so you were presented today with the uh, second version of the preliminary budget, <clears throat> and that was done. Financial uh, reduction, I'm just going to go over the basics here. Uh, in the change of the percent, we were over 100% uh, increase uh, in the initial budget, which is usually always the case. Not necessarily that high, but pretty much uh, always the case. We're, we're pretty high. So we're down to 49% uh, in the town and 29% in the village uh, for an increase. Those will be dwindled down uh, below the cap. Uh, by, I want to say, the end of this month. Uh, adjustment, we added a little to the fund balance, and we also uh, made some cuts uh, where, where we felt cuts uh, needed to be made. A, lo a lot of places, lines where uh, there was a exorbitant amount that was budgeted for this year that w was not used. So that's the, that's the basis for many of the. Just like a motion, accept this. We'll make a motion that we accept the preliminary town budget for 2024. Version. Version number two. I'll second. Any discussion? Call the question. Bingham, aye. Cool, aye. Cardone, aye. Scancarello, aye. Aye. Okay, so moved. Okay, uh, let's see, Smith Clove Park, 2020. Chris, did you want to speak on the budget or no. you guys are okay, okay. Uh, Town of Monroe Justice Court, Justice McKnight, come on up. You're the next contestant on the budget is right. <laughs> 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 Thanks, Tony. And, um, I don't know. It's, it's always a great board to speak to, although I don't know any other boards, so <laughs> take that for what it's worth. Um, no, just that I had gotten the preliminary budget and looked at it compared to last year, and everything looks fine. Uh, I had discussed beforehand that I didn't see an increase for the clerks yet, but I heard that you hadn't done the employees yet, and that was the yeah, reason Yeah, we usually do the employees at the last moment. Okay. Uh, um, 
five percent. Whatever you find in the budget. The judge, we realize that this has been a uh, inf inflation's been tough on all the town employees, and and of course those that are part of collective bargaining agreements, you know, we their their increases are are fixed, but we definitely want to make sure that we. Uh, Self included. Yeah, and and we, we we realize that we need to invest in those that are here so they stay. We get that. Yeah. No, they've yeah. They've, yeah. I'm just speaking the to the mic. Just, but, oh, I've enjoyed the quality of their work while uh, I've gotten a chance to work with them. So I'm just uh, happy that it's being recognized by the board. So thank you very much, guys. All right. Thank you very thank much, you. Thank you, Judge. Judge. All right. Thanks. Uh, Monroe, Movac, Monroe Ambulance. All right. Round of applause for our oh, yeah. EMT. Yeah. Yeah. You, you didn't think we were going to let you come up and get by that easy, Wayne, did you? So for those of you that don't know, Wayne was, uh, Wayne earned the uh, EMT of the year in the country, basically the Pretty United amazing. States. Thank you. The well-deserved honor. Uh, Thank you very absolutely. much. We cut your budget by 40%. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Take care, Wayne. It's all right. I got my award. <laughs> and don't do ambulance and stop skins. First of all, I'd like to thank everybody, the town board, for your continued support. We've had a great relationship over the years. You've supported us to no ends. Um, I'd also like to thank the people of Monroe Volunteer Ambulance Corps. They're a great group, and they make me look good. That's how I won my award. <laughs> oh. Right. Giving others credit, Wayne. That's great. Wayne, That's Wayne, had, Wayne had told me before the meeting, I went over to him and congratulated him. He said he thought it was a joke when he got the email. He didn't believe it. Yes. He, what happened was he sent me three emails. I thought it was a scam. So I didn't answer them. They called me. I didn't answer them. <laughs> what, 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 <laughs> so, the, That's great. Tell them, tell them what you told me about you called them up and said, hey, you can save a little money. I did. After I, I found out I won the award because Nancy Piper put me in for the award. So we were talking. And she said, you actually won that award? I said, it's not a scam? She <laughs> says, no. So I called up right away. said, I accept the award. But then I called the woman. I had to travel to New Orleans to get the award. So I, I called the woman in charge. I said, listen, I'll make you a deal. Send me the award, the $1,000 I was supposed to get for spending money. I'll save you 1200 on traveling expenses. And she says, no way. <laughs> Get your butt <laughs> down go. here. Good, good. Yeah. Which is good. Not only did I have to go down there, I didn't know I had, they didn't tell me I had to give a speech. I had to speak in front of 5,000 people. Wow. Oh, you're a pro at that, though, wow. Wayne. What's that? You're a pro at that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> great, great, great job. Congratulations. That's Thank awesome. you. Getting on to business. Um, Monroe Ambulance Corps, by any means, we don't think we're perfect, right? but we strive to be every day. Okay, the Ambulance Corps is in a constant struggle, as you know, running business, business, being businessmen, balancing budgets, supply chain shortages, long waits for supplies, um, while trying to bring the most advanced and best medical care to the community. Okay, right now, EMS, EMTs and paramedics are the front of the front lines. We see more in a few days than most people see in a lifetime. But EMS in Orange County is struggling. A lot after the pandemic, a lot of EMTs and paramedics quit due to emotional stress. So there's a shortage of paid people and volunteers. It's, it's even worse getting people to come out and we train, we offer to train them, but still. The other problem is, is mental health is a big one. We get uh, new members, they take a bad call and we don't see them again. So with that being said, uh, some of our overhead this year, we're looking into getting mental health for our members, a mental health service where they can call on a hotline if they have a problem. Um, we were fortunate enough to get a $95,000 grant from Senator Scoofus, thanks to Nancy Pfeiffer. She put a grant in, it took two years to get. But with that money, a lot of purchases, life pack 15 to hopefully during breast pain. Yeah, okay. All right. No problem. So we were able to buy a life pack uh, 15 defibrillators to do 12 leads for when people have chest pains. But the cost of those defibrillators 
were $33,000 a piece, and we were able to buy three. Also, we bought three new lifting devices for $9,000 to help us lift with heavy people. Okay, we have three new striker stretchers, two new striker stair chairs we had to buy because ours were getting old and the company wouldn't service them anymore. So that was a total of 114,000. Striker was nice enough to give us an, uh, a contract, right? Contract. Zero percent for five years. So we worked to deal with them. Um, we have to order a new ambulance because in a rotation schedule we're due for one. The cost is, is shot up. I think when we bought your the last one you paid for it was like two, two, 260, like 260, right? So right now we put an order in for one, the same ambulance, $300,000 in a two year wait. Um, so our total equipment cost this year is 522,400. And that's just the equipment we had to buy. That doesn't include um, the cost of maintenance of our ambulances, medical supplies, building materials, uh, personal protective equipment, and equip equipment readiness. Unfortunately, when insurance companies pay us, they pay us per mileage and a small fee for the call. They don't account for um, equipment preparedness and keeping equipment up. <coughs> okay, we're also fortunate enough that Assemblyman Egis is put in for a $250,000 grant for us to replace our rehab vehicle. Our rehab vehicle had to be taken out of service because it's so old and was unsafe. Rehab vehicle goes to second alarm structure fires, to rehab for firemen, it goes to MCI disasters, and to any, any disaster that we're called to, okay? What I'm asking for you is if you can, and any, any way to help us acquire the grant by calling Senator uh, Assemblyman Ekes, or I'm gonna call Senator Skoufis and ask them, because Assemblyman Ekes is putting, putting it in for 250,000, so. Oh, here, here's what I'll tell you. So you can use our grant writers. Okay. They would be happy to help assist you in the paperwork associated with it. Okay. Uh, they're working on a couple of them uh, as we speak. Uh, we, I, we actually had a conference call today on uh, on, on some of the grants, so. Thank you very much. I'm gonna, I'm gonna send you an email along with, with Taryn right now. Okay. Okay, so our accomplishments this year, we've done standbys for community events. We, we run a yearly blood drive, respond to multiple fire standbys, do CPR courses, Narcan courses, and stop the bleed courses. We also supply for Monroe Woodbury, along with Woodbury Ambulance Corps, uh, football standbys. We'll be there this this Thursday. Okay, we do speaking engagements at the high school. We coordinate various mass casualty events in Rockland County. Every year we help coordinate Rockland County's mass casualty event. Um, we take numerous medical calls and provide mutual aid to neighboring communities. Our Argo vehicles went up to the flooding when Highland Town of Highlands was cut off. We just sent our Argos up there. Our Argos do land, water, and ice. So the county requested them, so we sent them up there for almost two days. Okay, I'd like to take this opportunity while I'm on camera to thank Blooming Grove, KJ, Woodbury, Greenwood Lake for the support and answering calls in Monroe. When we can't respond, these other cores are helping us pick up the, the call volume because we're doing about 18, 19, Other than that, our budget request, same thing we ask for every year. The only problem may be is our contractual agreement with our day crew. We pay people to come in from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. because everybody's working. That cost may go up. Labor cost and insurance. What, what do you expect that? I don't know. I have a call into them. Right now we're using uh, Blooming Grove. So if, you, if you just give me a percentage. Yes, I'll get you. Yeah, yeah, I'll get you the number. <clears throat> And other than that, we're good. Okay? Yeah, and we appreciate the we support appreciate. that you, you give us all the time. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, and we, we appreciate what you guys do. Yeah, and you guys, guys are, and gals do. You guys are absolutely spectacular. Best, obviously. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Wayne, how short are you guys on volunteers? You're so short that there are only two people in the country that were nominated for the award. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're short. We, People are coming in. It's the problem is retention, as you know. Retention, is, and some of the problem with retention is 
they try it out and it's not for them, okay? Because it's, it's very demanding. We have a lot of cl online classes we have to take. There's a lot of training that's involved. And, and the state requ requires members in thank you thank you thank you very much thank you, thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Uh, Greg sorry okay anyone else here to speak on behalf of the budget okay uh, I like to keep the public hearing open till November seventh. I'm sorry. Yeah, November eighth. November eighth. November eighth. I'll That's, second that motion. Yeah, at seven p.m. or immediately thereafter. Seconded by Councilman McGinn. Call the question. Bingham I. Cole I. Cardone I. Skankrow I. Good night. <coughs> okay. So moved. Uh, item four point seven is a motion to open the continuation of public hearing for the proposed local law F V one to amend uh, Chapter fifty seven for the town code regarding tax exemptions for volunteer firefighters and ambulance workers. Anyone sign up? To, uh, I'll make the motion. I'll second. Call the question. Come back to me. <laughs> Cool, aye. Cardone, aye. Skankarello, aye. Can I? So moved. Anyone sign up? No public comment. No public comment. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh. Oh. Uh, I. I, I would like to keep this open for a couple of reasons. Uh, number one, uh, our assessor wants to discuss it uh, a little further because we don't know if it's going to affect the 24 budget or the 25 budget. It's obviously something that needs to get done. Also, I've had conversations with the county, and the county would like that all the municipalities within a municipality, such as villages, uh, do the same thing so that it's not difficult for them when it comes to working the finances out. Uh, I have sent an email out to both mayors. Uh, there was a small exchange uh, between Mayor Dwyer and myself, and I reached out to Lou Medina because I want to make sure he got my email because I don't remember seeing an email back from him and Lou's usually good. Uh, so I would like to hold this, hold this off till November 8th at 7 p.m. or immediately thereafter. Second for... Go ahead. So is the county looking for a, like a uniform percentage from like the municipalities, towns well, and villages, or, or the, the... The county would like a uniform percentage not only from the municipalities, they're looking for that from the school district as well. Oh, okay. Makes so, uh, like, if we give 10% and then the villages, let's say, give 5%, it also makes an accounting nightmare for the assessor. So... I think we should all be on the same page moving forward with it. So then for us... Good that luck would with getting uh, the 38 municipalities that we have. No, no, I'm just... I'm just <laughs> no, 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 I yeah, know. With, yeah, 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 yeah I'm just county, worried about yeah, the yeah. two villages and us and the yeah. school district. Yeah. And, and then also Woodbury. Yeah, Woodbury. Because they're part of that same school district. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. All right. Call a question. That was my discussion. <laughs> all right, thank you, Mike. Call a question. Thing am I. Aye. Cardone, aye. Skankarello, aye. McKinn, aye. Okay, so moved. Uh, chapter 4.9, a motion to open up the continuation of a public hearing regarding local law H-V1 of 2022 to amend Chapter 57 zoning concerning the regulations governing tree preservations. I'll second. Call, call the question. Am I? Cool, aye. Cardone, aye. Skankarello, aye. McKinn, aye. So moved. Maureen Richardson. Hi, guys. Hi. Just a Have reminder a for public hearings, there's five minutes to speak. Hi, my name is Maureen Richardson. I live on Harriman Heights in Monroe. Um, I specifically wanted to talk about adding, if there is not one already, um, with the building inspector or inherent in the tree code revisions. Um, a mechanism for reporting hazard trees, like if there's a large dead tree 
on, say, a neighbor's property. Um, just from my own experience walking around town, like I had mentioned, there are many trees that have been eaten by insects, um, and many homeowners probably can't afford to take care of all of them at once. Um, and I understand that it's a burden uh, because I actually had to take down many, many dead trees on my property, and it's a large expense. Um, it really is. But um, specifically trees that if they fell down, I live um, on a hill beneath someone who's above me, and they have a couple trees that um, it is a large expense, but a tree specialist essentially advised me that if it does come down, it is going to crash over my entire pool, the fence that we had to in reinstall because another tree fell on it. Um, you know, and damaging an in-ground pool is like hundreds of thousands of dollars and um, heading that off before, you know, insurance and all of that gets involved because you don't know what they're going to cover and not. Um, and usually, you know, neighbor to neighbor, you can work that out. And of course, I'm not saying that's a problem. But in the case where potentially, you know, it's, it's something that has to go through the town because um, perhaps the person just doesn't understand the importance or is unwilling that if it's determined by the code uh, enforcement officer that this is absolutely a hazard and it needs to be taken care of within a certain time frame, um, because like I said, it can cause massive property damage. Um, just walking around town, like there's certain areas where um, there are actually like five or six dead trees that are very mature ash trees um, that could come down on power lines um, in a neighborhood off of Harriman Heights, but it is on private property and I'm not sure that it falls technically within like the three to six feet um, purview of the town. So I would just recommend that there be some kind of mechanism for extreme hazard trees where if the person has been, you know, notified that, or the town or the code enforcement officer notifies um, the homeowner that, you know, you've got an extreme hazard tree, will you take care of this? And if they don't get it done within a certain time frame, that the town and the code enforcement officer can act and possibly uh, force that because it would just cause massive power line damage and massive property damage to like abutting neighbors if. Who's paying for the cost? Oh, I, the, the homeowner if it's on their own property, but that's what I'm saying. It's a difficult situation if. Or if they can't afford it. Yeah, I don't know. So that's the thing is I have a situation where I think that is the problem because we've alerted them of this massive dangerous issue that's looming over my property and I see the crack expanding, expanding, expanding upward and it's, it's gigantic, it's a massive problem, and it's gonna come down and it might even hit my house. Like the tip, they even said that it might hit my home. So what do you do? And oh, so, yeah. We had, a, we had um, something like this happen in the village of Monroe, and we talked with the building department, the village building department, and unfortunately, because it's on private property, it's, it's a property owner, it's a civil issue. It's, right, it's so I'm saying in the tree preservation rewrite, is it legal and could we look into potentially if that's legal to have, if there is a hazard tree, an extreme right. hazard tree, could we enforce that they must take care of it? Right, that's so that's, and, and that was the challenge that we had in the village. The village wasn't able to enforce that. We can talk with But uh, to create council. it, they can't enforce what's not there. So that's what I'm proposing is that perhaps if it is possible. Right, but it wasn't, and what I'm trying to tell yeah. you is that it wasn't possible for us to initiate something like that, to put that into part of the property management okay. and the property maintenance law that the village created. But we can talk with council and find out exactly what jurisdiction we have. Based on my past experience, when it's on private property, the municipality really doesn't have anything much further than saying, you have this issue, you have to take care of it. But there are other codes, and um, I can also send in examples of other towns' code um, where they talk about hazard trees and what people are responsible for. Because obviously, if there's another building um, inspector violate, that's ex essentially what all code enforcement on private property is. If they're violating private property ordinances, then you do have to. Um, Excuse me, Maureen. I'm going to interrupt just because time is up. I'm going to leave it to the board to make a motion to continue. Public comment? I don't have to make a motion, but 
You can finish, finish your comment. Yeah, finish just because comment. Dory obviously was trying to be helpful and we wound up going back and forth, which cut into, you know, yeah. but thank you for that, but also just wanted to complete my thought. Um, just that I have seen, I believe I've seen in other, maybe Long Island or across, you know, New York, that there are hazard tree ordinances and it would be good to explore that because my argument really, preliminarily, I'm not a lawyer, would be that all code enforcement issues on private property obviously do violate some kind of ordinance and then the code enforcement officer enforces it, right, under penalty of the law. So um, if I can find a precedent in another town, I'll send that to you guys um, with the hearing notes. And that's just my concern is there's a lot of dead trees and uh, if we can think of anything, because I think that's going to be a problem. So thank you. Thank you. That's all for public comment. Comments? So Dennis and I had a very good conversation with Max Stack, our planner. Um, Max was able to clarify some of the questions that Dennis posed to him and to the board uh, that he referenced when he would come up here for public comment. Um, and whatever could not what, if there were reasons, for instance, we talked about um, the, the list of trees, we were able to clarify where that list of trees would come from. Um, so w we expect to see the revisions come from Max by November 1st. And then we'll, so my recommendation is that we keep this open. I'd like to keep it open until the following one. Yes. All right, so make, if you want to make a motion. I make a motion that we keep the public hearing open until November 20th at 7 p.m. or immediately thereafter for uh, amending Chapter 57 concerning the regulations governing tree preservation. Moving a second. Question. Bingham, aye. Poole, aye. Cardone, aye. Ancarello, aye. And I. Okay, so move. Okay. Uh, item 4.11. Is the set the public hearing date for the amendment of Chapter 18 of the Town Code, Councilwoman Bingham? Any thoughts? Was that you? No, that wasn't me. <laughs> that Madam Clerk. Is that you? The email came from Brian, but I don't know prior who initiated it. After 18 animals, why don't we put this off until? I don't know. We'll just set the public hearing. That's all it is. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let's set the public hearing for November 8th at 7 p.m. or immediately thereafter. Okay. Bingham will second. Call the question. Bingham, aye. Cool, aye. Cardone, aye. Ancarello, aye. And I. So moved. Might have been Ben. Who's that? That might have been Ben. Yeah, I, I, I have to I have to look into that. Thank you. Okay, uh, item 5.1, uh, acceptance of the October 2nd, 2023 minutes. I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second. Any changes, alterations, corrections? No, call, call the question then. Bingham, aye. Cole, aye. Cardone, aye. Ancarello, aye. Can I? Okay, so move. Next up is the general fund abstract. So it's a uh, general fund. Wait, I don't want to do this in the wrong order. General fund 6.1. Uh, so be it resolved, I'll make the motion, be it resolved that the town board of town of Monroe we request approval of abstract 23-15 from the general fund containing checks 30683 through 30742 totaling $473,675.59. Bingham will second. Call the question. Bingham, aye. Cool, aye. Cardone, aye. Bancarello, aye. Good night. So moved. Next up is the general fund abstract. Uh, be it resolved that the town board of the town of Monroe request approval of abstract number 23-16 
uh, from the general fund containing checks 30743 through 30811, totaling $434,938.34. I'll make the motion. I'll second. Call the question. Ingham, I. Cole, aye. Cardone, aye. Scancarello, aye. Yeah, aye. Okay, so move. Next up is a cash transfer from the investment funds. I'll make a motion that the Town Board of Town of Monroe requests approval of abstract 2023-7 cash transfer of $667,000. And that's in our New York class investment funds. So they'd be all, they all would be moving from our consolidated savings to the New York class investment fund. Second. Call the question. Ingham, aye. Cole, aye. Cardone, aye. Ancarello, aye. Good night. Okay. Uh, item 8.1, <coughs> Round Lake Park Association. I understand there's a couple of members here that want to, want to speak. Come on up. Just when you come up, just state your name, where you live, what road you live on. You don't have to state the number. And just pull the mic forward because sometimes it's Sorry, hard guys, to hear. Don't be nervous. Take, oh, okay. take, my name take is, a deep breath. <clears throat> my name is Olgitsa Pilla, and I live on um, 20 Island View Avenue in Round Lake Park. And this is... Oh, sorry, Silas Eva. Uh, I live on Round Lake Park Road, 404. Um, tonight, uh, I was supposed to... Uh, actually, I was supposed to speak on my own behalf, but Susan Pendergast was supposed to be here, but she is ill. And so I'm going to read... Uh, something that she wrote, and then after, I would like to just add on to it. Sure. <clears throat> um, this is Susan. I would like to thank the board for this time to speak at tonight's meeting. I'm here to talk about changes that have been taking place in our Round Lake Park community. In addition to these changes are concerns for the safety of the people who reside here. Several months ago, a car was stolen from someone's home and belongings were taken from another vehicle. We know, <clears throat> too, that on the same night, Another neighbor's video cam recorded someone going through three of their cars in their driveway. I'm glad to hear that there is an amendment of Chapter 40 of the Town Code with the addition to a new Article 2 for residential rental permits. Moving forward, I would like to know what steps will be in place to ensure that the renter will follow the code. Also, what can be done now as we have single-family homes with many occupants in which many, not all, lack the investment in community? We have people that live in our neighborhood who have brought forth complaints on excessive garbage on the rental properties. We have people who have called our law enforcement to report an excessive number of cars at a property with cars parked on the lawn, people inhabiting the rentals jumping over the fence on a resident's property, and loud <coughs> music that blasts late at night and sometimes into the morning. We have had a level three sex offender living in one of the rental homes, and most recently, there was a renter who attempted four invasions into homes with three of those attempts into the same home within a three-day time span. We have people who lived here almost forever and families who have moved to Round Lake Park specifically for its beauty, peace, and community feel. Many of us no longer feel safe as we did before. In addition, we worry about how this will ultimately affect the value of our homes and the property that we work to maintain and improve. Lastly, there are non-Monroe Woodbury buses that are traveling at unsafe speeds, being a threat to our children playing outside as well as people taking walks around the neighborhood. These buses pick up door to door while traveling on side streets. Instead of having designated bus stops in more open areas, as do the Monroe Woodbury buses, people have seen DOT numbers, DOT numbers smeared or painted over on some buses. We will continue to provide photographs and or video of buses to further show proof to what we have been experiencing. Susan Pendergast, Round Lake Park board member, 28 Tefanic Avenue. Thank you. <clears throat> so I, I, will, I will comment on, uh, listen, I live in the neighborhood too, as it's well known. Uh, I grew up there. Uh, my grandma's house I could see from my window when the leaves come down. So as far as the buses go, uh, I got videos. I forwarded those videos to Patrick Cahill at the Bernard Bay School District and Dawn Russell. 
Patrick actually called me today about an hour after they were forwarded. Uh, he said it's great when there's videos because there's proof. And the one video showed a bus at the top of Island View Avenue making a left-hand turn while there was a car in the right-hand lane stopped to make a right-hand turn. So the bus basically went into the opposite side of the road and he was, you know, he was appreciative of that. Uh, so there's other emails that I received that I forwarded to him too. So that, that's being addressed. As far as the gentleman that's, that did the four home or attempted the four home invasions, uh, I think one of his biggest mistakes is that he tried it three times on a gentleman who was a retired NYPD cop. Uh, and, uh, you know, he was, he was arrested. Uh, he, he worked at Menarca. And the day after he was arrested, I called the owner of Menarca to say that there was a problem with this gentleman. And he informed me, which I don't know if you're aware of, that this gentleman uh, moved to Kansas City or Kansas. So, so hopefully he's out of the area. I mean, I, I, listen, we have been working, I have been working more in the last two months on law enforcement issues, as well as Councilman McGinn, who's the liaison with the state police, than we've probably worked on in the last five years. Uh, and listen, it is troubling. I'm not, I'm not going to deny that, but I will say that the fact that people have ring cameras and that you can... from those cameras is, is a big, big help. Uh, I had two weeks ago, I had a gentleman, coincidentally, I was sitting on the porch <coughs> with our daughter and I had a car drive by and he drove by slow and he actually had his camera out his driver's side window filming the house across the street from me, which is where our son and daughter-in-law live. So that was, that was a little troubling. And by the time I got into my car and went up the road to try to get a license plate, uh, I, I lost them. So, so there, there's a lot that needs to be done. Uh, Councilman McGinn, uh, is it possible you can, I've spoken to one of the sergeants over there, but maybe we can, listen. I, or you, yeah, we could definitely uh, ask them to step up their patrols over there. Did you want to see? I know you wanted to say something else in your own. I wanted to add a little something about go the buses. Yes, go ahead and then we'll, and we'll comment wrote, as a okay. board after you get done speaking. Mm, yes. I just wrote something short. I just uh, wanted to say, it, it, it was probably all said already, but I just wanted it to be clear. I just wrote that in addition, these buses operate on all streets within the neighborhood as pickup points and pass-throughs. A call was placed to the Monroe Woodbury School District bus garage by myself. Um, they stated that their buses only travel on Ra Round Lake Park Road, as they have deemed bus operation on other streets in the neighborhood too hazardous for large buses. In the event that door-to-door -door pickup is an absolute necessity, the district utilizes small buses. This begs the question as to why private bus services hold a different sentiment regarding the safe travel of large buses on these streets than the public school district, which <laughs> serves the entirety of both the town and village of Monroe. This being said, does the, post, does the posted speed limit in Round Lake Park reflect said changes, not only in the travel of these buses, but also in the overall volume of traffic related to the aforementioned population growth? Thank you for your time and consideration. Oh, so let me just say this. There is a woman sitting in the back, Carol Hawkshurst, who lives on Hawkshurst Road. Uh, we have, Dory was at the meeting, Mary, were you at the meeting too? Mary was at the meeting. We met with the school district and we tried to have them come up with a plan to attack situations like this and, and create a resolution for it. We, we've Monroe really, Woodbury School District? Yeah, Monroe Woodbury School okay. District, yeah. There was, the three bus companies were there, Dakai, Emmis, and uh, Quality. What was the other one? Was it Quality or? Dakai, Dark, 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 Dark Dark yeah, Dark Eye, and uh, there was a third bus company there. Woodbury yes. Junction? What? Woodbury Junction? No. 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 But anyway, we sat down with them, and we were really addressing the issue that Carol brought to this board. And 
it's frustrating because you want to explain it because I'm, I'm do you want to say anything? Because I'll explain it. So what what happens is because they're private contractors, some of those buses actually come up from Brooklyn or Rockland. So the Monroe Woodbury School District does not have oversight yes, of those that buses. That I'm aware of. Yes. Okay. So that's where the catch twenty two is. The problem mm -hmm. is. I would love to see more police patrols out there. Unfortunately, there's not enough to go around. Uh, I know, Carol, they were, they were situated out on your road for a couple of days, right? Yeah. So I don't know what the result was with the amount of tickets, but it's frustrating. I get it. I mean, I mean, I, honestly, I have, you know, two little girls and... They, you know, I, I just started working as a teacher in, up in Middletown, and there are days where they have to walk home normal. I mean, they're almost middle schools. They should be able to feel safe. And I'm driving home thinking in my head, I just hope that they're okay walking up the street. I'm training them how to walk up the street because these buses are really scary. And if any, you know Island View. They're, they're coming down, and now they're starting to come up from the lake. Yeah. And they're just passing through. They're not picking anyone up. Oh. I, I mean, it's unbelievable. Sometimes, when, when I was home in the summer, I must have seen at least seven buses just going through. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, it's just unbelievable. Video footage is the yeah. best thing I only thing caught that you a little get. bit that I sent. Did, did oh, you, you get that? You got the Island View one. Yeah. Right? And but I, there was the other one down. coming down. I, I coming. You got them coming up. I, the one going down was just. I too mean, fast. those. Yeah, they were. Ran, they weren't really doing so, anything. So, so one of the most hideous answers we got out of that meeting, when one of the uh, owners or. Why do you have every house? Why centralized bus stop at the end of Hawkshurst Road? And the comment was, I don't know if you remember it, well, when we came to this country, we've been doing it that way ever since. And it's like, no, no, it doesn't fly with me. So I think the, the constant pressure that's put on the school district, the bus garage, that's really what's gonna, gonna help the situation. And if you need any assistance from any of us, we, we'd be more than happy to help. But the bus garage doesn't have anything to do with the private companies. Well, they have Depends. something to do with the private companies who are busing children who live in uh, the Monroe Woodbury School District. There, there's, there's certain bus routes that they do have control over. There's other bus routes that are going beyond the Monroe Woodbury School District and beyond where they can travel to. Those tend to be the buses that we're having the biggest problem with. But if, if we make enough phone calls, and if we call enough meetings with the school, with the transportation department of the school district, at some point we're going to be able to get somewhere because they're not going to want to keep taking our complaints, right? They want this to go away just as much as, or I should say, they want this to be resolved just as much as, as we do. So video footage is is best um, with as much of a narrative as you can provide. So the day of the week, the time of the day. Um, who was outside, whether or not there were other cars there that you're not seeing in the video footage, that would be best. It's going to be a little hard for me to get footage, but... Whatever. You ask your now, neighbors, too. But don't, I can on certain days, even yeah, Sundays. Don't, don't be the only one that has to get the yeah. footage, you know? Okay. All right. Okay, so I'll just keep trying to record, you know, video record and... We'll, we'll do what we can do to get state police to, uh, or maybe the sheriff's department too, we'll try to get them over there. Um, but you had mentioned that, of, of course, yeah, we did pass the, the rental registration law and we're, we're looking at some enforcement mechanisms to address that because that, the reason we did it was basically um, because people would, you know, instead of families moving into houses, it would be multiple groups of, of people that were not connected, basically, you know, rooming houses, which is why we put that section in the law. Also, we noticed that a lot of these violating properties were owned by the same people, so we put an addition in there about how many rental properties someone could own. So, of course, we got taken to court like 
happens when people are called for their misdeeds or called out of their misdeeds. And we'll win that, like we win everything else because we do it, you know, based on having good legal counsel to do it. Um, but we are looking at some enforcement mechanisms to, to address that. Uh, obviously, the building inspector can't be everywhere and be out there to enforce certain parts of that. But we're, uh, you know, we, we realize that there's a quality of life gap that we need to kind of figure out yes. a way to, 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 to enforce. And we're going to have our own police department to fill that gap. Right? Yes, thank so. you. Yeah, I just wanted to make a comment. Almost 40 years ago, I was robbed. The trooper who came out said, basically, it's young people. They're looking for an easy mark. They know who goes to work during the day. Uh, makes it a little harder now because people have the ring cameras. that You can identify them a lot easier. And I also know that there were robberies in the neighborhood of cars. People left their laptops in the car. Do not leave valuables in your car. You're just inviting trouble. Lock your cars. So if we all do basic uh, housekeeping, maintenance kind of things by locking, watching, not leaving property exposed, it'll cut down on their willingness to make an attempt, hopefully, and that hopefully you know, the ones that do, we can catch, like uh, with uh, Councilman McGinn's help and uh, the state troopers and possibly even we can reach out even to the Sheriff's Department, possible? Is that possible? Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, thank you both for being here tonight. All right. Appreciate thank it. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you so right. much. Have a good Appreciate evening. You. Thank you. Okay. Uh, item 8.2 is the employee resignation. Uh, Chris Rand, who's a heavy equipment operator from the highway department. Uh, I'll make a motion to accept the resignation of Chris Rand, highway equipment operator. Good evening, Chris. Uh, from the highway department, effective October 13th, 2023. Second that motion. Uh, Pat, any comments you want to make? Yes, that was a, a shocker, and it was it's with with deep regret that we that we lost him as an employee. Uh, everybody that dealt with Chris knew what kind of employee he he was for us, but he wants to go back into uh, the field he was in before. So every piece of equipment you knew how to operate every every kid. How old is he? Thirty two, thirty three, maybe. Twenties. He was in his twenties. Yeah. He's your age. One of yeah. a kind. Yeah, one, one of a kind. kind. Uh, I mean, I, I listen, I saw him on Friday. I, Pat and I went up to him and said, you ever want to come back and work here? You, you got a job. That's how good he is. So, uh, okay, so all the uh, vote on that? Do we make a motion? Like Tony yes. and Mike. Resignation? Okay, then then am I. Cole, aye. Cardone, aye. Scancarello, aye. Good night. Okay, so moved. Uh, item 8.3 is the hiring. Uh, have a good night, son. Take care. Uh, it's the uh, hiring of Jerry Fraioli for the position of HEO, highway, uh, highway department heavy equipment operator at a rate of $30.25 per hour, start date of October 17th, 2023. He's been pre-approved for his position by Orange County Department of Human Resources. Hold a second. Any discussion? Pat, you want to? I just want to let the board know that Jerry has done uh, two seasons with the town of Monroe in the past, and that's the reason why I chose him. He knows town of Monroe. He knows the plow routes. Um, he's also a veteran. Um, he is also a volunteer fireman and an EMS uh, man for the town of Monroe. I think he's going to be an asset for us. Okay. All the question? Bingham, aye. Cool, aye. Cardone, aye. Cancarello, aye. Can I? Okay, so move. Okay, next up is the uh, Girl Scout Troop 307 Pancake Breakfast Fundraiser. Uh, I'll make a motion approving the use of town hall meeting room by Girl Scout Troop 307 on Saturday, October 21st, from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. And that's for the purpose of a pancake breakfast 
in support of a gold service award project. Uh, the proceeds will benefit the following projects. Repainting the 50 states blacktop area at Pine Tree Elementary and lending library of mental health skills books at the Monroe Ponds. Uh, they have sent us a certificate of insurance. Uh, that's basically it. I'll second. Call the question. Aye. Cool, aye. Pardon, aye. Scancarello, aye. Good night. Okay, good night now. So move. Okay. Uh, agreement for the ATM services for the food truck festival. Somebody's got to make, I, I, I have to sign that, so it's a rental agreement. I'll make a motion that we authorize the supervisor to sign the agreement with Accessible Means LLC for ATM and merchant services for the food truck festival. I'll second. Call the question. Bring them aye. Cool, aye. Don't aye. Scancarello, aye. Good night. Okay, so moved. Is a signage on town property. Uh, this is prohibiting <coughs> placement of any obstructions on town properties or rights of way of properties owned by the town. Uh, I'm going to read the now, therefore, be it resolved. Uh, the above whereas clauses are incorporated herein as set forth in full. Uh, section 2, the town board hereby establishes and confirms its existing and previously unwritten policy that no obstructions will be placed on town-owned property and the rights of way of town-owned property that are maintained by the town, including but not limited to signs, vehicles, debris, or any other matter, obstruction, uh, that would obstruct or impede the maintenance of town property and the rights of way of town personnel. Uh, section 3, nothing herein shall be construed to prohibit existing obstruction that has been authorized and put in place for town purposes or the placement of any future obstruction that are specifically authorized by the town for governmental purposes. Section 4, the town board hereby authorizes the town highway superintendent or other town employees or officials to remove any unauthorized obstruction placed on town properties or in the rights of way of town properties that would tend to impede or obstruct town maintenance operations. Section five, if the person placing self-destruction on the town property or in the town right of way can be determined, the town shall attempt to make notification to the person placing such item, advising them at a location at which they may recover self-obstruction from the town. Section 6, in the event that the owner of the obstruction cannot be determined or the owner does not respond after receiving contact by the town, the town shall be authorized to dispose of any obstruction after a period of 30 days. Section 7, the owner of any such obstruction may come to the town hall at any time to seek to recover the obstruction from the town, which shall be provided with same if still in the town's possession. Section 8, the town shall not be responsible for any loss association with the placement of unauthorized obstruction. Section nine, this resolution shall be effective immediately. I'll make that motion. Second for discussion. Go ahead. Um, we have a sign section under zoning. Good night, girls. Good night. It seems to me that this came out of um, the three foot right of way that was discussed at the prior meeting. Um, I'm not in favor of this being done at this time because it is so close to election time. Um, I did see by Water District 1 there were numerous signs placed, political signs placed. Um, there's no listing of where the town properties are, so people would be unaware. They might think, hey, I'm in so-and-so's yard, but actually that might be a right-of-way owned by the town. So I'm really not in favor of this law being done at this time. Question? Hey. Cool. Aye. 
Cardone, aye. Scancarello, aye. Good night. Okay, so moved. Item 8.7, the 2024 diligent renewal quote. That's for board docs, Madam Clerk. Yes, so um, the current period, uh, the new renewal period is September 1st of 2024 through August 31st of 2025, and there's a price increase of $945. I had reached out to board docs, and uh, Jen and I actually have a, I think it's a Zoom meeting scheduled for this coming Thursday with a gentleman uh, to discuss another possible option. So there's board docs and there's apparently now diligent, which is a step up from board docs. Uh, currently with board docs out of, I believe it's six, six or seven potential boards that could be using board docs, there's only three, planning, zoning, and town board. Uh, so we're trying to get, I know Smith Clove is interested in utilizing board docs as well as the Monroe uh, Fire District. Um, so to get everyone on board using the program is the ultimate goal. Um, Jen and I will see what the Zoom meeting entails uh, and is offered to us on Thursday. Otherwise, it's a $945 increase for board docs for next uh, next year beginning September 1st of 2024 through August 31st of 2025. Madam Clerk, what's the total amount on that? Currently it is 18,900. It would be going up to 19,845. We don't we don't diligent we don't we have no idea what their their pricing is. Not yet. Okay. All right, thanks. What do you have in the budget? The nineteen thousand? Um, actually, that's that's a number that's not in just in my budget line. It's a number that's yeah, it's yeah. spread out. out. Okay. When do you need to make this decision by? <coughs> Before the budget gets adopted. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I asked what budget? <laughs> well, good answer. So, so we're talking about a difference of eight hundred and forty-five dollars. Nine forty-five. Yeah. So th that's that's something we could pull from contingency if need be. So I mean, if if, if we if we already budgeted nineteen thousand, and you're not sure whether it's going to be nineteen or eight forty-five. Well, no. It's currently we're paying nine, eighteen thousand nine hundred. It's going up to nineteen thousand. <laughs> So it's a difference of nine hundred forty-five dollars, right? And when is your Zoom meeting? This Thursday with with yeah, Jen. Yeah, so, so so you'll get an answer by then, and mm -hmm. we could adjust it in the budget. Yep. Well, I just needed to present it to the board. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Good presentation. <laughs> okay. Next item up is the renewal quote for the Orange County Ulster Bosey's microfilm storage. So this is for our micro, microfilms uh, that are being stored up at the county. Uh, the yearly cost is $564. That's for 2324. So I'm just requesting approval from the board um, that has been submitted in the budget. Okay. So if it's submitted and it's in the budget, as long as we approve the budget. You're good. <laughs> okay. So, do, do I you need a motion a, on you that? Need a, do you need a separate resolution for Orange County? No, it's just for for us. Okay. So, so that I so that I can send in the renewal form to them. Oh, okay. So, so you need a resolution yes. to send a renewal form from them. Okay. So. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve the Orange Ulster Bosey's microfilm storage at a yearly cost of $564. Second for discussion. One other question for Val. Val, do you know if uh, the town historian Jim Nelson also takes part with the microfilm storage, or is this just yours? So currently there's 47 rolls of microfilm um, that is up there. 
I know some of them, uh, I believe some of them are older town board meetings. Uh, so this is just, just backup that's being stored up at the county. So it has nothing to do with and that just town clerk in town. There may be some for him, but. Okay. All right. All right, that was, just wanted a clarification on that. So Tony, you made that motion. Yes. I don't have a second. I'll second. Oh, Mary, did no, you Mary second? second? Mary second, yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, Follow the question. Bingham I. Follow the question. Bingham Bingham I. I. Cardone, I. Ancarello, I. Can I? So move. Next up is the WeatherWorks program for the highway department. Superintendent Patterson. Well, everybody knows what kind of year we've had weather-wise. And to be able to monitor weather over Facebook or or the internet is very difficult in our field when we're out in the thick of things. So I did some research and Town of Wallkill uses this program and for them it's pretty accurate, but it's not accurate for us because they didn't get six inches of rain in two hours. Um, we've also had um, threats for nine inches of rain, which they didn't get. And just since July 16th, we've been beat up pretty good. And I think that the town needs to have this at the tip of their fingers. So with this program, I believe it's $2,075 for the year, but it, you will also have um, 24, I will have 24 hour a day, every minute access to a meteorologist if I'm in question on what's going on, when it's gonna stop, where it's gonna go, um, how much we're getting, and not everything is perfect, but the, this company, WeatherWorks, has been spot on. They're out of Jersey, not out of New Zealand, even though I love Ben Knoll, I think he's great, but uh, this company is really what I think we need. I'll be able to have um, many different users on it so that my guys can get it, um, supervisor, you'll have access to it as well. Um, so it'll be at your fingertips as well. So when we have to put alerts out, um, if I'm in the middle of something, I can ask you to, to take a look and see if you could put something on um, the alert system for us. But hopefully we won't need to do that. But the way the weather's been, we have no clue. So uh, I'm pretty confident with this program. And I'm asking the board to approve the okay, it's seventeen hundred twenty-five dollars. Okay, you the said year. two thousand. It, it was seventeen plus the three, three, and change that's on there too, for the radar. Oh, okay. It's a radar thing, so it was. So. Twenty-one, twenty-one hundred bucks. Yeah, not to exceed twenty-one hundred dollars. I believe, as I said, I believe it was two thousand. What is it on? It goes right on your phone. It'll it's be on, on your phone. It'll be on my phone. I will get emails every day. I will get emails when a storm is coming. It's, it's an amazing program. Does the Weather Channel know about this? Um, <laughs> Sounds I'm like sure it. they do, but, the but I, I don't think they study it. <laughs> they ought to follow it. Yeah, okay. the weather's been so erratic all yeah. around, like, you, like you'd mentioned, eight inches of rain here, two inches of rain there, so this, this, will, this will be good. Yeah, I mean, we, we, where I work, we use a, uh, a similar program, not that one, a different one that, that kind of gives you that, that 24 seven uh, meteorologist, you know, access, it gives you, you know, real time basically, or as real time as you would get from, um, you know, changes and things like that. So they, they definitely are worth having. Um, I'm surprised that, does the district have used one for making their weather calls for closings or they, they don't? They call Pat, no. they call Pat. <laughs> they, they, they do, we communicate a lot together. Um, I've been communicating with Aldo, he has it as well. Um, okay. But the school districts, almost all the school districts in Orange County use Ben Knoll out of New Zealand. Yeah. Is what they use. Yeah. To, wow. to yeah all the kids you. use them too because the, the day before a snowstorm, there's all those predictions on right. whether or not you're going to have school the next day. And it sounds crazy, but he is, he is from Orange County, so he has always, uh, I guess, loved it here, and he still does the weather for us. Just the weather can be so unpredictable because... Back when I was working in Middletown, they only had, let's say, four inches of snow, and we had like 28 or 30 yeah, inches yeah, of yeah. snow here. So if you could have something really pinpoint Monroe, I think it's a wonderful investment. 
And, and to be honest with you, hopefully he can pinpoint different sections of Monroe because if you go where I live, yeah. we have 10 inches of snow where you have an inch and a half down on Main Street. It's elevations. The elevations yeah, we've, make we've a difference. seen that firsthand. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, listen, they're definitely good programs to have. Or right. a, a good, uh, I don't want to say app because it's more than an app, but they, they are, a, it is a great resource for, for that. Yes. Maybe we should get the district to kick in a little bit since you'll be, no, I'm just kidding. But that would be, uh, but they are great to have. We use them all the time. It's a, it, it is another tool in the toolbox. I will be eliminating a lot of different ones that I have on my phone. Um, I have so many different radars and I try and follow so many different things and it's like all over the place. It gets you com more confused than knowing what's going on. The go-to weather guy in Monroe. <laughs> No. Right, so we need a motion? Yeah, we need a motion. I'll make, I'll make a motion to... Contract. Contract, okay. To approve the contract not to exceed $2,150 uh, with uh, WeatherWorks. I'll second. Tony, do you have to <coughs> sign any contract with that? Can you make that motion? Uh, I do. I can sign it or you can sign it. The board just I, I, I it. We'll, we can authorize you to sign it. Yeah, right. just all right. So, Mike, make the motion then, please. Um, all right, I'll authorize that we uh, allow the uh, highway superintendent to sign a contract with WeatherWorks not to exceed twenty one hundred dollars for the one hundred fifty. Twenty one fifty. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Twenty one fifty for the uh, the weather tracking program to benefit the uh, the operation of the uh, town highway department. Bingham will second. Question. Bingham, I. Well, I. I. Cancarello, I. Can I? So move. Thank you, Pat. Okay, item 9.1 is the parking restrictions on town property. Uh, so, uh, Council Nugent's office has prepared a resolution uh, on overnight parking in the town hall parking lot, and that's prohibiting it. Uh, therefore, be it resolved that Section 1, the above whereas clauses are incorporated, herein as set forth in full <coughs> Section 2, the Town Board hereby establishes that overnight parking in the Town Hall parking lot at 1465 Orange Turnpike in the Town Hall will be prohibited from the hours of 10 p.m. through 6 a.m. on all days of the week. Section three, the town supervisor, town highway superintendent, and any other officer, employee, or consultant who hereby authorized to take any and all action as necessary to carry out the provision of this resolution, including but not limited to the acquisition and posting of signs at appropriate locations to be determined by the highway superintendent on the town hall property to notify persons entering the town hall parking lots of this prohibition. Uh, section four, the town highway superintendent and any other officer employee as directed by the town supervisor may cause the <coughs> removal of any unauthorized vehicle by a tow company authorized by the town. The cost of such removal and any related charges, including storage fees, shall be the responsibility of the vehicle owner. The town clerk's office shall notify any inquiring vehicle owner of the location of their removed vehicle. Section five, the regulations herein shall be effective upon the installation of signs notifying persons entering a town hall parking lot of the pro, uh, prohibition of o overnight parking. Section six, the resolution shall be effective immediately. Uh, I'll make the motion. I'll second. One, one point uh, that council made in the discussion was that obviously if there's a meeting here, and it goes past 10 p.m., it's obviously, uh, people are not gonna be towed. He's, we're not gonna have. No. Oh, call the question. No, my. Cool, I. Cardone, I. Cancarello, I. Can I. Okay. Item 9.2 is the Lake Sapphire Drainage District. Uh, so now, there, this is a resolution authorizing the preparation and issuance of requests for proposals for the Lake Sapphire Dam. Uh, so whereas the town board, based on the recommendation of the town's engineering consultant, desires to authorize a request for proposals 
from geotechnical firms to perform a study of the existing soils and provide a recommendation as the basis for design for the Lake Sapphire Dam repairs. Now, therefore, be it resolved that section one, the above whereas clauses are incorporated herein as if set forth in full. Section two, the town board hereby authorizes the town's engineer, MHE engineering, in consultation with town legal counsel and the town clerk to prepare and arrange for the issuance of a request for proposals seeking proposals for geotechnical firms to perform a study of the existing soils and provide a recommendation as the basis of design for the Lake Sapphire Dam repairs in a form approved by MHE Engineering and the town's legal counsel. Section three, the town clerk is authorized to set any and all dates for issuance and return of the request for proposal in consultation with the town's legal counsel and MHE Engineering. MHE engineering. And section four, the resolution shall be effective immediately. Hold a second. Any other discussion? Call, call the question. question. Do we need a date as to when these requests for proposals will be returned? Uh, it, that's up to the town clerk. In section I don't three. have any information yet from MHE. Okay. Just clarification. Thank you. So Bingham, I. Cool, I. Pardon, I. Ancarello, I. Good night. Okay. Councilman McGain, you have uh, old business? Yeah, we have old business uh, that would, did not make it onto the agenda due to the uh, due to the fact that it was still being worked on by our uh, by our town council. Uh, I'm sorry, our town attorney. Uh, and this, re this is regarding the uh, the purchase. Was everyone just to kind of give everyone a little bit of backstory? Back uh, last month, or was actually late August, we announced that the. Uh, that the town had reached an agreement with the uh, with the plaintiffs who were suing the town that are the current owners of uh, the right hole corridor uh, to uh, for the town to purchase the the 247 plus or minus acres from them. Uh, since that time, uh, our town uh, our, our tar town attorney and uh, engineers and, and other professionals have been working uh, diligently to. Uh, to come up with a, a uh, stipulation settlement that we could sign and then go to contract to, to purchase the property. The bonding was already taken care of. We were approved for the bonding. That's not an issue. Uh, but this contract, uh, this stipulation of settlement has been going on uh, for, for quite a while. And it's just been a, a, a bit of a road to get to this point because of uh, not do on our part, but mostly to uh, the other side and dealing with uh, dealing with a lot of issues that came up related to our original agreement. So we do have a resolution um, confirming and ratifying the authorization of the town supervisor to execute, execute the litigation stipulation of settlement agreement and contract the sale authorizing the town to purchase the 247 acres in the right hole corridor. So I'm gonna read through the whole thing. It's kind of long, so uh, buckle in. Whereas certain pla certain plaintiffs, Chab 5 Realty, LLC, Golden Ray, LLC, and Eagle States, Eagle Ridge Estates, LLC, now known as the plaintiffs, previously commenced litigation against the town of Monroe concerning certain parcels owned by the plaintiffs. And whereas plaintiff Chab 5 Realty is the owner of certain parcels in the town of Monroe identified as ta on, on tax map section 31, block one, and lots 18.31, 29, 62, and 63. And whereas plaintiffs, plaintiff Golden Ray LLC is the owner of certain parcels in the town of Monroe identified as tax map section 31, block one, lots 1.11, and 1.12, and whereas plaintiff Eagle Ridge Estates LLC is the owner of certain parcels of the town of Monroe, identified as tax map section 31, block one, and lot 2.4, and whereas the parcel owned by Chab 5 Realty LLC, Golden Ray, Golden Ray LLC, and Eagle Ridge Estates LLC are collectively referred to as the property. And whereas 
Plaintiff Chab Five Realty LLC commenced lit litigation against the town and additional defendants in the United States District Court of the Southern District of New York pending under case number 717CV07300 arising from the town's enactment of a moratorium and certain zoning changes in the town, in parentheses, the federal litigation, and whereas Plaintiff Golden Ray LLC filed an Article 78 petition and complaint against the town and additional defendants in the New York Supreme Court, Orange County, index number 000300-2017, arising from the challenge, arising from and challenging the enactment of a moratorium and certain zoning changes enacted by the town. And whereas, Plaintiff Chev 5 Realty LLC filed an Article 78 petition and complaint against the town and additional defendants in New York State Supreme Court, Orange County, pending uh, under the index number 000338-2017 arising from the challenging and enactment of a moratorium and certain zoning changes in the town and Whereas Golden Ray LLC and Chab 5 Realty LLC proceedings filed in New York State Supreme Court are collectively referred to herein as the state litigations. And the state litigations and federal litigations are collectively referred to herein as litigations. And whereas plaintiffs in the town previously entered into a global settlement of the pending federal litigations and state with the intent of resolving all pending potential federal litigations and state litigations, disputes, claims, causes of actions, including any and all disputes, controversies, claims, and causes of action that have been brought by the plaintiff or that could be brought by the plaintiffs against the town in any court or in any jurisdiction or in any administrative proceeding. And whereas the town performed all required obligations under such, such settlement, including the adoption of certain zoning enactments known as the Conservation Cluster Residential Zone, CCR, and the plaintiff subsequently entered into an agreement with Sunbrook Partners, LLC, which involved Sunbrook acquiring and developing portions of the property and preserving the majority of the property as open space. And whereas litigation ensued between Sunbrook and the plaintiffs arising from a contract between Sunbrook and the plaintiffs which did not involve the town, uh, <clears throat> some, known as Sunbrook litigations, and where, whereas Sunbrook failed to file an answer in, in the Sunbrook litigation, and whereas the following Whereas following the initiation of the Sunbrook litigation, Sunbrook stopped responding to the town and ceased pursuing the proposed CCR project. And whereas the plaintiffs requested that the court remove the litigation hold that had been previously put in place between the town and the plaintiffs and the litigations and plaintiffs then brought it to engage in settlement discussions with the town. And whereas the parties with the assistance of the state court engaged in the settlement discussions in settlement discussions and an effort to resolve the pending litigations and, and whereas the parties have reached a proposed settlement of the litigations in which the town would purchase the parcels owned by the plaintiffs in order to minimize the development of the property, maintain the majority of the property as open space, protect the watershed, consider active and passive rec recreational uses and reserve a small portion of the <coughs> property for future use to serve the public purposes and provide public benefits. And whereas the town desires to authorize the town supervisor to execute a final stipulation of settlement and contract to sale in the form satisfactory to the town's legal counsel that would authorize the purchase of the property and the discontinuance of the litigation against the town with prejudice. And whereas on August 14, 2023, the town board declared itself lead agency for secret purposes and issued a negative declaration and whereas on August 21st, 2023, the town board previously authorized the supervisor to execute the s settlement documents and the town board's desire to confirm and ratify such authorizations, authorization of this town supervisor to sign the stipulation of settlement and contract of sale, as well as any other documents necessary to effectuate the transaction. 
Now, therefore, be resolved that section one, the above whereas clauses are incorporated herein as set forth in full. Section two, the town hereby authorizes the town supervisor to execute the stipulation of settlement, contract of sale, substantially in the form presented to the town board and any, uh, and any do other documents necessary to carry out the provisions of the resolution and the final form approved by the town's legal counsel. Section four, the town supervisor and any other officer, employee, employment, employee or consultant as directed by the town supervisor is hereby authorized to take any and all necessary actions to carry out the provisions of the resolution. Section five, this resolution shall be effective immediately. So I'll make this, since the supervisor can, can. I got distracted, can you read that again? <laughs> <laughs> and. Listen, I'd have to take a couple more breaths of air. Um, so based, I, I'd like to make a, res, uh, I'd like to make a motion that we pass this resolution as read. Full we'll second. Discussion, call the question. Ingham, aye. Cole, aye. Cardone, aye. Ankerello, aye. And I. Okay, so moved. Public comment? Harold Hawkshurst. Just a reminder for public uh, comment, you'll have three minutes to speak. After Carol Hawkshurst will be Maureen Richardson. First, first off, that was a very pleasant surprise to hear that. Uh, it was probably a whole summary of the past how many years of working on this. Um, feeling a little emotional listening. Um, and I just, again, want to thank the board uh, for purchasing the properties. Um, and I think it's a, a good decision in protecting the watershed and uh, protecting those uh, or working on those properties but not having high density there. Uh, with that, I just wanted to ask, because I know we typically, and I've brought this up before, um, we typically reevaluate the comprehensive plan every five years. Um, are you considering doing that this year? And I would like to request that if you do, to take into account the environmental constraints, um, that that would need to be deducted from the total acreage allowed to be built by the developers. Uh, it's just something that I hope is being, would be considered, because I know you've been talking about senior housing and affordable housing and, and, and building that. So with that, just to keep that in mind. And again, thank you very much. Welcome, thank you, Carol. Maureen Richardson. Maureen Richardson, Harriman Heights in Monroe. Um, I just do want to point out one thing before the rest of my public comment, that 30 days before an election, the town board majority who has two seats in the game decided to change the actual law um, to prohibit the opponent from having signage in town rights away. I hope you feel really good about that. Um, anyway, thank you to Chris Ekes, um, Assemblyman Burr Chris Ekes, who is constantly reaching out to our EMS and our local departments who are strained and I believe, as we've all been saying, too strained to allow Pilati Village and other developments that you guys were considering, such as Rye Hill. And I believe the Monroe EMS just came up and validated all of our arguments from the past few months about how we cannot facilitate critical care seniors and perhaps even a concentrated amount of that amount, 178 units, on Harriman Heights because we are so desperate for volunteers, we are so strained for funding, um, and I will do everything that I can to reach out to Chris, who is an amazingly genuine person, um, to see what he can do for our EMS as far as that grant. And I look forward to working with him as Preserve Monroe, a community activist. And again, I, I wanna second what um, Carol Hawkshurst has been working on and I've been working on through Preserve Monroe, that 
um, CCR, the way that it is written, obviously was a result of the litigation. It obviously was a settlement that the environmental factors such as wetlands, such as ridgeline and overlay protection districts were not accounted for or removed when calculating total density, and that was to derive an insane amount of density on these properties to allow a developer to receive the amount of profit that they needed to develop in light of the litigation we found ourselves in. And now that we have bit the bullet, we should remove CCR the way that it is written and adjust it for the other CCR in the region. The code as written is that it removes wetlands and other environmental factors and it factors it into the overall density calculations. Because the way that it is written is exploitative, it is greenwashing, it is not conservation, it is a settlement, and Monroe deserves better. Thank you. William Weishart. William Weishart, uh, Harriman Heights Road in Monroe, the town. Um, I just had some thoughts about enforcement when, uh, you know, uh, the board was discussing the tree code and then the rental law briefly came up and, um, you know, the town really has a problem with, you know, writing these codes, whether they're good or bad, and they don't get enforced uh, evenly, which leaves us open to lawsuits or sometimes don't get enforced at all, uh, or sometimes they only get enforced in unfortunate circumstances. Um, but interestingly, an unwritten code was recently enforced about signs in front of town hall that is not a law um, by someone that is a member of the opposite party. Um, and I just think that is a bad look for the town. I think that the town should reevaluate uh, enforcement across the board. Thank you. That's all for public comment. I just want to comment on the last speaker that spoke. So that the neutrality of this town uh, has always been paramount when we have political elections. And whether you're a Democrat, independent, conservative, or Republican, we have never allowed signs here because it gives the impression that those of us who are in this building are supporting that specific candidate. I have removed a sign this afternoon from uh, Judge Sarcon. I don't know who put it there. It was almost on the corner, but it was on our property. And I will not personally compromise that neutrality when we're dealing with elections. And it just shows the cowardice that this gentleman spoke and then walked out and didn't want to hear uh, our side of it or my side of it. Uh, so that, 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 that being said, I will never waver from that because of the neutrality and the fact where some of those signs were placed, you would be disrespectful to the veterans who will be honored in the coming weeks with our heroes, uh, with our flags for heroes. Uh, and I'll, I'll leave it at that. Yeah, I'll, I'll, before I address your, your, your comments here, Carol, I'll, I'll echo that. I mean, the, 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 the first speaker, who's a candidate for public office, obviously, running, running for a town board position, stated that the sign, the, the law prohibited uh, her or the opposite party from putting signs there and that's that's nonsense and when you make an accusation like that and you clearly know it's untrue then it really calls into the question the fitness of the person to serve in that position as did some of her other comments that she made but I, I won't go into that uh, but uh, th the law prohibit, you know specifically prohibits anybody from placing a sign there so whether it's a Republican judge or a Democrat that's, you know, plaster signs across the entire lawn, there was a reason for doing that. And it was always an unspoken law that you wouldn't put signs on town hall, just like you wouldn't put them in front of a church or something like that. 
it's just, it was decorum. <coughs> it's unfortunate that we had to pass a law because people don't know how to follow that decorum, but it's something we had to do. So uh, again, I hate to venture off into politics, but you know, the door was opened here by this uh, young lady this evening. Um, just the comp plan, I, I assume that at some point in the, in the future, next year or so that, that the, the board, I mean, I'm not gonna be here, we'll, we'll, we'll revisit the comp plan like you generally do every five years. Um, with that process, there are public hearings or things that, that you should certainly come and comment on. It's, it, is a, it is a process and it is a very involved process. Uh, when we did the last one, I mean, we passed it in 18 months, which was kind of uh, really good timing, record timing to do it. But we had a very, very thorough uh, public in input process. We had two like town halls where people came. They did they did surveys. They spoke to the planners that were pre uh, preparing it. It was a very inclusive uh, process. And and so you know, uh, Carol, I would recommend that when that process comes in, please by all means come. I mean, I'll come as a citizen and give my thoughts on it as well. Uh, clearly, there's. It, it's a great plan that we have. Um, it could always be better. Um, the CCR, uh, again, uh, was not part of that plan, but it, that was something that was used in other municipalities. Uh, our planner came up with it. It was a great idea. Um, environmental constraints were built into it. Uh, that, that's a false statement. Um, the, the way that the, uh, the way that the, density was figured out was based upon what engineering studies provided. It's a moot point for that property now, uh, since it's no longer gonna be built, and the town's gonna own that property, but uh, the CCR was a good plan. And what it did, and I'll always say it, it gave the town unprecedented uh, control over the types, sizes, uh, and, and density of housing that was gonna be built and, and provided for really true planning for, for the future of the town, which included senior and workforce. So uh, we wanted to, you know, our idea to pass it was that it would provide for those things, plus it would provide uh, future tax, you know, revenue or spread around the tax revenue uh, paying for the rest of the town. So the fact that it didn't come to be is, is, is fine. Um, you know, we, when we wanted to do, uh, when we wanted to settle this lawsuit early on, the plaintiffs didn't want to sell it to us, so we had to get creative. And uh, again, it was a great plan. Had it came came through, and we would have uh, made sure that it was th the contractors were kept to the or the the buyers were kept to what they were supposed to. But that's a moot point. And uh, but again, when the comp plan comes around again, uh, Carol, by all means, please come up and, and address it. Anyone else? Motion to adjourn this evening's meeting. I'll second. 838. Seconded by Councilman Scancarello. Call the question. Bingham, aye. Cool, aye. Cardone, aye. Scancarello, aye. Good night. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for all those who came.